Greetings, Earthlings. Well, uh, we're back with the PDP 1173 Plus. Um, and uh, basically what we saw in the first episode was getting a minimal system working, just a processor and uh, some memory. Uh, now, you'll notice here before we proceed that uh, I've done a couple of things here on this uh, on this uh, screen. Um, uh, the uh, you can change the color uh, with this VT100 terminal emulator. It's got these little jumpers, and you can remove them. I've got it set to white, but I wanted an amber screen, and so what I did is I went in here and uh, let's see change the uh, change the colors in here okay so red 100 uh, green 70 blue zero I think actually I wanted blue a little more blue I thought I had done a little more blue I thought I had done that uh, like 20 blue because because uh, red and green will give you a yellow uh, but not going full green goes a little more brown whatever anyway I also did an inverse video, which uh, which it allows you to do in the setup. Uh, but that's just to make it nicer to look at. Um, you can see here <coughs> that uh, when we uh, started the video, it was running this uh, continuous self-test. And I had that running, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. Uh, and it tested fine. So we've got a basically working system. So today, what we're going to do, but oh, wait, basically working, but we haven't tested that it can actually communicate on the Q bus because it's communicating with the memory over the uh, PMI, the private memory interface. Uh, and so it's possible actually that, it, uh, that it's using Q bus because there's a control status register there or something. But <clears throat> not likely. Anyway, uh, today we're going to take this uh, serial card that I had. I called it a spare serial card. I showed in the first video there. Uh, and see if we can get that working. Now, this is an M... What was it? D, DLV11F, I think. M8028. And it has this funny... 40 pin connector here uh, which is a little odd so I had to make a cable um, and for for this I just took the cable off of a 40 pin like IDE ribbon cable um, this is a uh, This is a <laughs> DIY, you know, custom wiring thing. And so that's labeled. Okay, so this card, anyway, uh, can do both current loop, 20 milliamp current loop, which might be useful if we had a teletype, but we don't. Uh, or I can do EIA or RS-232, whatever you want to call it, which is, which is what it's set up for. You can figure it with these, uh, you can see these wire wrap jumpers. So I've set the address to, uh, let's see, the I, I don't know if you'd call it the first or the second. We've got the console port, and that has a known address, and then the second serial port, or maybe it's the first serial port that's not the console port, however you want to think about it, um, goes at... Uh, a certain address, one seven 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 six five hundred or something like that. Uh, for wire wrapping, I use this tool. I think this came from Radio Shack way back when. And uh, one thing about these, if you go looking for one that you may not know, is that hidden inside the handle, there's a little wire stripper. 
So if you do go looking for one on eBay or something, verify that it's got that wire stripper. Uh, although I don't actually use that wire stripper, but anyway. So I had to set the address. I had to set, set the data rate to as high as it'll go, which is 19,200 bits per second. Um, what else? There's the interrupt vector uh, is 300 um, octal and eight bits, no parity and one stop. Bit. Okay. So that should talk to, you know, a terminal or whatever, it provided the terminal can run it at 9600 baud. Um, if I wanted to drive my uh, Silent 700 with it, I'd have to set it to 300 baud. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a bit sketchy, the, the connections here, but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, plug it in and uh, power up and, and we'll see what happens. Um, and then we'll hook it up to something and uh, and see if it can actually talk. This is the this is this is the way things are when you're putting something together from parts from various sources. You don't know that what you've got is a working is a working bit of kit or not. Um, even though the seller may have represented it as working, or it was it was removed from a working system, you know, or something like that. Not always the case. That, uh, that you can make it work <laughs> without a little effort. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, well, I got to talk about the back plane on this. This one has a, what did we say, a 9276 back plane, which is all nine slots of uh, QCD. So all the, the uh, dual height boards, so it's dual height and quad height boards, Dual height boards will all go down uh, what we see from this side as the right side. When you turn around and plug it in, it goes on the left side. It goes into the A, B slots, and the CDs will remain empty for the uh, for, uh, for for the Cubus uh, cards. There are other backplanes, some of which are all Cubus, in which case you go the Cubus cards, these dual uh, height cards go in A, B, and they can go in C, D, and they better because there's this bus continuity issue that snakes around, and uh, and so you can't skip slots with that. And then there's this weird mixed one, which is the 9278, which has three slots of uh, Q, C, D, and the rest are all Q bus, Q bus. Uh, so you have to know if you're going in the first three. Uh, you know, but basically that was that that was for like an 1183 or whatever um, that would have two PMI bus boards and a uh, quad height you know CPU board an M8190 CPU board in those first three slots, and then it's all uh, it's all Q bus slots after that. But of no real concern here. All right, and so here it is turned around, so you can see the uh, the back plane in there. And again, these are the A, B, C, D. Um, so for this back plane, these are Q bus, and these are C, D bus, which uh, in the case of these two cards is the PMI private private memory interface. I think so. Okay. So this card goes right in here in the next available slot and if I had uh, if I had additional cards which eventually I will um, then the order of the cards may change uh, I'd say a disk controller that might want to go higher priority because there's a, a priority issue interrupt uh, priority and, and such uh, issue with the way things uh, line up and so uh, there's recommended orders in the uh, in the deck documentation for uh, which cards go in which order uh, but anyway again if I had another uh, 
you know, dual with uh, dual height uh, <laughs> Q-Bus card, it would go here, not here, okay, on this backplane. Actually, if this were a 9278 backplane, same thing, because it's the third slot, and so that would be CD. But after that, uh, they'd go alternate. Let's turn it around and fire it up. All right, so here's the setup. We've got the, uh, of course, the PDP-11 right here. Um, we'll be using uh, as a terminal on the second port this HP protocol analyzer that comes through here. Um, it's got lights and stuff, so I can see if things are not right. Uh, and since we're coming straight out, this is this is a DTE. Um, so we'll want this thing to set this as a DCE device. Uh, RS-232 is where terminals and computers are considered DTE or data terminal equipment. Uh, modems are DCE or data communications equipment. DTEs talk to DCEs. So that's why you have null modem cables that makes a DTE look like a DCE or whatever. Well, this thing can look like a DCE if it wants to. So we'll fire that up. Okay, and uh, so I've got this uh, terminal emulator, which is what I'm gonna use. Makes things a little easier. So to do that, let's see if I can remember how to do that. Mass store right there. Load, yeah, they sync terminal emulator, load, and execute. Okay, and uh, let me see. Setup, I don't think, well, I think I need to do the, uh, there's a setup on the terminal setup. I think it's this one is what I want. Okay, so... 8-bit ASCII, no parity. We're at 19.2, which is the fastest that that thing can run. Mode is DCE. You see, there's the, uh, there's that selection. Handshake, none. Okay. And uh, execute. Okay, so that is now uh, running as a terminal. You can see we've got lights over here. Maybe you can see that. These lights. Uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> On the uh, PP11 side, let's fire that up. All right, firing up. PC testing in progress. Dunka, 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 dunka. And. Uh, A map here. Now notice this it recognizes that that second serial port is there at 17776500. Uh, it doesn't recognize it as a serial port but at least it sees that there's something there so that's a good sign. Now what I want to do is um, I'll enter this program that uh, this is a program that uh, Dan North AK6DN posted on the uh, Vintage Computer Forum uh, and what it'll do is it will take input from either keyboard, keyboard um, and send the output to the other screen okay so that's testing that you know, the serial ports are both working for both, both send and receive. So we can type on that one over there, and it'll come out here. And we can type on this one here, and it'll come out over there. Okay? So I'll go into the debugger, ODT, and I'll enter that.
Okay, so that's entered, and uh, now I'm going to start it. It starts at location 2000 octal, so 2000G. And uh, if I type on here, this is a test. We can see it's coming out on the other screen. Look at that. You see that? Hello, world. Okay, excellent. So that much works. Let's go the other way. I'll go over here and type on this screen. Does it work from here? <laughs> and it does. Okay. Hello, world yourself. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, that establishes that the processor is able to uh, access the Q bus. It establishes that the serial card is working, um, and it's working at, at 19.2 kilobits per second, which is good. And uh, my cable works, and despite its, uh, you know, apparent flakiness. So the next step, I guess, is to look at uh, bringing up that TU58 emulator and loading some software onto the PDP-11 over the serial port. 